What's up, everybody? This is your new host, Caroline Precious, for Geeks and Gamers Radio Prime. Now, if you are a fan of Jeremy Griggs, aka that guy in the Star Wars hat, don't be don't be afraid. He's going to be sticking around on this channel. And if you're not a fan of him today, must be your lucky day. So we are going to be talking about the controversial Venom trailer. We're also going to be talking about Black Panther. But first, joining me today, he is the host of our All Star Wars podcast, Late Night on Canterbury. I hate the name, but it's so damn catchy. Mr. <laughs> Tony Sin. Hey, how's it going, Caroline? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing beautiful today. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, like Mr. Rogers says. And from Geeks and Gamers Radio gaming podcast mr ray apollo how are you today sir it's the first time we've actually come face to face i know it's like hey thanks coach for putting me in the game uh it's like wow um this is the first time and it's like well we're either gonna she's gonna love me or it's gonna be like wow ray's still here cool that's all right <laughs> just don't expect a slap on the butt or anything maybe um, uh, if you give tony a dollar i'm sure he'll handle that for me i don't even need to give tony a dollar for that <laughs> About 35 cents will do it. No, I'm talking like no money. I'm like, this is free. Thanks, Tony. All right. (laughs) But yes, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you both for joining me. This one is going to be a really great prime because we, of course, are going to be talking about Black Panther, the movie that has everyone talking one way or another. I saw the movie yesterday, and I've got to say, I was so impressed. And as a fan of Black Panther comics, the way they adapted Black Panther from the comics, heart-shaped herbs and everything, I absolutely loved it. Ryan Coogler has done a fantastic job. Cannot wait to see more Black Panther. I can't wait for the second movie, and the first one's just come out. This is how great this movie was. Tony, you saw the movie on Friday. Tell us your thoughts on Black Panther. I absolutely hated it. Okay, well, um, we'll this this friendship has been terminated. Um, Tony will uh, no longer be on GG Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Just lost my Star Wars podcast and everything. <laughs> um, but no, no, I actually, I really, really, really liked it. Um, I was a fan of you know Black Panther growing up and stuff. So uh, anytime something like that happens, you know, I guess you could say that for any Marvel movie at this point, um, you're going to be kind of a little bit nervous. You want them to do it right, do the characters justice, tell a good story. Uh, I honestly there was no I there was only one issue I had with this movie and that was some of the CGI was a little bit sketchy particularly yes. particularly the last main fight between uh Black Panther and Killmonger um the, I'm I felt like I was watching a cutscene in a video game I like and video games that's I cool. love video games GPR but, uh, game podcast yeah thanks I uh, mean I I that's fine and all but I don't I feel like for a movie with a high as high of a caliber as a studio as Marvel, they that I think they could have let the CGI cook in the oven for a little bit longer, especially in that last uh, sequence. But other than that, um, I really really liked it. Uh, Chadwick Boseman is the Black Panther, is T'Challa. I feel like he should like adopt that accent and like in his everyday life now. Um, it was great. Everybody did a great job. The cast was phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> Eric Killmonger just might be the new best villain in mcu mm-hmm. um i think what makes a good villain is when you can kind of feel for him you can understand and there's a lot of points in this movie where i'm like he's where killmonger's talking and i'm like well you know he's not wrong <laughs> you know so this man has a point <laughs> he does exactly and there is you know profound things said by him and spoken especially um one of the last things he says in the movie it was just really like, damn. But uh, yeah, I, I, I really liked it. Uh, but what about you guys? What do you guys think? Yeah, Ray, let's hand it over to you. You've seen Black Panther. Are we on your fourth show now? For, I've completed the fourth show. You've uh, completed the fourth. You're going to go for a fifth. I'm Clearly, probably going to go for a fifth. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love to give them my money. That is correct. Tell us what um, you think about the movie. Uh, Black Panther as a whole is one of my most favorite pieces of entertainment i've ever consumed <laughs> and, you know oh the black guy is saying that because he's black no black panther is wholesome it is it it, ha- it tells a great story from start to finish uh the cast is spot on i don't think you would have been you would have been hard pressed to find a better cast uh or any for anybody cast in this movie like it's so well done uh the score 
is brilliant. It does nothing but elevate every scene. Uh, the setting, Wakanda itself, uh, brought to life in such a way that I just, I couldn't believe it. It's just, I was like, y- you did Wakanda so much justice. <laughs> There's so much color. And you can see like actual Afrofuturism and just like the, the building styles and the transport, like just in their technology and everything. It's beautiful. Um, I, there were many times, I can't, there was actually twice. There was only two times where there were just, there was just a single tear. I was like, Oh man, that's <laughs> like, I will remember that forever. That moment, how I felt right then. I will remember that forever. Um, this movie is really good. Uh, I, it's, it's a movie for everybody. I don't care what anybody says. Mm-hmm. Anybody can go and see this movie and have a good time. If you go into it wanting to have a good time <laughs> because yeah. it's well done. I'll back that up. It's a very powerful movie. Mm-hmm. And it, it it did movie. And like what you said about Wakanda, I mean, I didn't have the tear, but I was <laughs> overjoyed inside. Like, they've got it right. They really do have it right. Yeah, do. I do want to speak about Eric Killmonger. Because, Ooh. I mean, you can relate to his character, like Tony was saying. People have even said that he could be better or on the same level as uh, God bless you so, but Heath Ledger's Joker. Whew. What do you guys think of that statement, Tony? I think that's a little bit of hyperbole. I mean, because, I mean, let's all face facts. Um, that character portrayed by Heath Ledger is arguably one of, if not the greatest on-screen movie villain in a comic book movie. Um, like I said, arguably. Some people may agree, some people may not. Um, I don't think Killmonger's quite there. Um, but that does not, not to say that it wasn't a brilliant job by Michael B. Jordan or he wasn't a great character or anything like that. I just think that that's, 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 that's going a little too far for me personally. Okay. But like, again, again, great, great villain, great character. I absolutely loved it. I don't have a thing bad to say about it, but I just don't think I'd quite put it that high. Okay. How about you, Ray? Uh, people love to compare things. Uh, that's, that's a human thing. We love to compare things to like, ah, yes, this thing is clearly better than this thing uh, to kind of give things weight. And I don't like to do that. Uh, at least I try to catch myself when I am doing it because we can talk more constructively about things. Uh, Eric Killmonger is a fantastic villain. He is a fantastic opposite side of the coin from T'Challa. And in such a way that this this villain he has a story you do feel for eric because what did he have he had nothing and when he had when he literally comes from a civilization that has everything <laughs> you know and so for that character to come as far as he did and get to where he wanted he had a plan and he had been stewing on it for a long time mm-hmm. and you can tell i mean but not just that killmonger himself he had such a swag that you don't get from any villains anymore he had a presence oh yeah and that's what was the one of the best parts about that character for me and then again i'll, I'll touch on that score his theme is one of the best. Like, goodness, it's, it's so full of swag. And just like, if I was listening to a song, yeah, no, that's Eric Killmonger's song. <laughs> like, it's so good. Um, compared to Heath Ledger, though, let's, let's stop. Come on, guys, come on, please. Let's stop doing that. Let's, let's no, no. <laughs> like, yeah. Heath Ledger, that performance by itself stands alone. Like, you, you, you can't touch that performance. Uh, Michael B. Jordan did an incredible job bringing Eric Killmonger to the big screen. Like, incredible job. Nobody, I'll tell you right now, people will never forget that. They will always think about Killmonger when they're talking about villains from now on. Um, phenomenal job. Like, a great villain. Uh, I think the only con I really have about the movie is that we didn't get more Killmonger. That's it. You know? <laughs> so, we got Andy Serkis, though, as well. And, oh, he played his role cool. to a, a T. Uh, he has so much fun in that role, you can tell. But, yeah, <laughs> Killmonger is great. And um, he will forever be great. Yeah, to side with Ray, I wouldn't like to compare the two either. I think they're two different beasts entirely. They're two different characters entirely. Was both these actors great at playing the villain on screen? Absolutely. But to compare the two, let's just not do it. Killmonger was great. And like Ray said, we we are going to remember him. He's not going to be forgotten. It was a great performance as Michael B. Jordan tends to give and I, I mean we're going to see him in Creed 2 as well 
Mm-hmm. Ivan Van Draco's son, I believe. So. Oh man. <laughs> Ooh, I know, right? I love. I, yeah. I mean, some people like the big Russian. Some people don't like the big Russian. I love that Rocky movie. I thought it was if fantastic. He dies. He dies. <laughs> it's great. So, from more from Michael B. Jordan, keep your eyes out for Creed. Two. So overall, guys, Black Panther. What are we rating this out of one to ten, Tony? Um, I'm. Can uh, you come back to me? <laughs> uh, ahead, oh, he needs to think about it. Ray. You've seen it like five times, <laughs> ten times. <laughs> uh, what is your rating? Okay, so for the people at home watching, for the people listening, however you decide to consume this show, uh, I am not a film critic. Uh, I am not a Black Panther expert. <laughs> I am simply a black man that loves comic books and video games, and Black Panther happens to be one of my more favorite characters ever written. This movie, um, on a scale, we're going one to ten. Mm-hmm, one to ten. One to ten. Um, I like. I I can't give this thing, this movie, anything less than a. 10 in my book and if i was doing if i was going to give it something less than a 10 it would be for those weird like movie things you know like ah yes sometimes if you look at claw's missing arm the wind was blowing and the shirt was moving thought that was weird sometimes but i mean like i don't really care about that kind of stuff because everything else i feel like made up for it it's not a perfect movie nothing's perfect um but Sheree even tells you just because you think something perfect doesn't mean it can't be improved. Mm-hmm. There's definitely things that could have been improved, but uh, it would be hard pressed for me to find them because, you know, that's just, I'm a viewer. I like to consume media and this was wonderful. I had fun from start to finish. They made me feel something. They made me think. They reminded me of things. This this movie had a message and people were like, oh, you social justice warriors and you're pushing your agendas. No, they were just speaking truth in this movie. And if you feel that way, hey, more power to you, my friend. Um, but this movie did everything right by my standards as a movie. Uh, and I can't wait for what they're going to do next. So big shout outs to you, Kugler, and all the people who made this movie because it's fantastic. Hey, Ray, you gave a solid 10. Tony, do you have a number for us? Yeah, I do. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, taking into consideration, you know, my issue, like with the CGI, um, there was one other issue that I did think of. And unfortunately, it relates to the score. Oh my God, we're about to fight. Now, it wasn't the score as a whole. There were certain points in the score where it was really jarring and it almost took me out of the movie at points, if that makes sense. Um, Because it just didn't seem to fit. Um, Sometimes in like transition scenes and stuff, there would be like a little bit of a, almost like a a hip hop beat uh, playing kind of. And that just did not really fit with me in some of the moments because it felt because I feel like I'm watching, you know, this big epic warrior movie. And, you know, with all these, it, it just didn't fit the tone of the movie for me, I, th- I feel like. Tony, um, Wakanda is one of the most technologically advanced nations on the planet. What are you saying? <laughs> like, I don't get it. I mean, I don't, that's not, that's, I don't think that's what I'm trying to say. I think it's more like, I don't think that the, the hip hop beat part of it are they like over there bumping Jay Z in Wakanda? Probably. <laughs> it's, possible. it's possible. It's possible. I've done that over in England. Uh, like for real though. Like yeah, probably. Okay, uh, but they are, England, they are aware. But England's not an isol- is- isolationist nation though. So, um, but that's true. But I, like I said, it didn't it didn't hurt the movie enough to where it was something that I would have brought up had I not been in a conversation with you guys about it. Right. Like if I was talking to like somebody else and they asked me if I should go see it, I'd be like, well, hell yeah, go see it. Um, but that, it just kind of irked me a little bit, but with that said, I would probably have to give the movie a solid nine and a half. Okay. I'm giving the movie a nine. Only two things bug me and it wasn't the, uh, score. So Ray, it's okay. Um, (laughs) it, it was the, um, the love interest didn't really like that whole thing. I thought the whole love interest thing was completely unnecessary. If it wasn't in the film, I wouldn't have missed it. So I think it could have gone on without that. And the second thing I can't say because it would be a spoiler. And that is something that I definitely don't want to do for you guys watching who haven't seen the movie. But what we're all trying to say is go see this movie because it's fantastic. You won't regret it. 
So uh, if I can interject for a moment, I have one lingering question that's been bothering me about the movie. It's not something that bothers me, bothers me, and it's actually like legit question. And I might be, I might be kind of getting into like a little too nerd deep here. Nerd. Oh, Nadia, the like, best. We don't talk about that here. Yeah. What? Um, but, and I'm gonna try to say this and remain as spoiler free as possible. But okay, at the, there's a point at the end of the movie where T'Challa spends a copious amount of money. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, taking what we know from the movie. You know, what kind of being an isolationist nation. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't particularly engage in foreign affairs and trade. Mm-hmm. Where is the child getting all this money? Okay, let's think about this from just kind of a, a a bigger standpoint. A country of that of of that economic value, Wakanda knows how money works. <laughs> they can right. get any form of currency in the world. I'm sure they have people they have people all over the world. They know how all the economies work all over the world. I'm sure if they wanted to get some money from like they made a trade of some sort of good or something. Like they, they could get the money is all I'm saying. Like I feel like it would not be very hard for them to acquire US dollars to buy land in the United States. I don't think that'd be a difficult. A lot for of them. money though. A lot uh, of money. Wakanda is valued at over like Something stupid. Well, just I think just T'Challa is well valued at like ninety billion dollars, so I think he's fine. <laughs> right, but, but, yeah, but my thing is though, at this point in the movie, he or at this point in the universe, uh-huh. I I'm just not seeing where that money would come from. It's I mean, it seems like. Granted, like I said, this is going. Yeah, but so you're digging way too deep in. You you picking up the wrong shovel. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm like, man, how did this dude get all this money when it doesn't seem like, you know, granted, like, you know, there's, there's ideas that you could say where they could get money because, you know, there's spies all over the place, what kind of well, spies. I mean, just, I mean, and beyond that, I'm sure they, they do have other avenues of making money within Wakanda. Like, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure they do, too. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if this was something that, like, you know, maybe I missed. I don't think it's really something they would care to explain much. It's really boring. <laughs> And it's I mean, like he's royalty. You can't forget that yeah. he's from a royal family and they have jewels and gold and all kinds of things that could be traded for any kind of currency because they've got like spies all over the place. I mean, not to mention that one thing, um, vibranium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, the I, world doesn't know that, how, yeah. that they're sitting on that kind of vibranium. Oh, they don't know that they have it, but that doesn't mean that, oh, uh, we had this little tiny bit of vibranium. I think, it, I don't remember what the exact, they've given us the exact, like, value of it. So, like, if they just sold, like, an ounce of it, I'm sure it's a few, it's, it's a decent, decent penny. It's a lot of money. Yeah. So I'm sure it is. It was just something that I'm, I'm Let me I'm, tweet I'm, Kugler for you and see what I can find out. <laughs> I tried to. I tried to. Uh, he doesn't have. He doesn't have Twitter. I did. I, I, um, you I did just tweeted at Chadwick said, Boseman, right? I did. I, I saw that Boseman. tweet. <laughs> I did. I saw it, and I was like, I really hope Tony actually gets a response. <laughs> I didn't expect an answer, but it was. I didn't expect an answer, but I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. It's worth a shot. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> email Marvel. That would be my e- email yes. Marvel comics. Get in touch with Kevin. Just, actually, you no. Know, tweet Dan Lee. He was yeah. there. He was. He was the yeah. thirsty gambler. <laughs> That was that was his exact role. That was Stanley has an amazing cameo in this movie. Yeah, it was good. It was really so good. good. Uh, but yeah, don't leave if you've won money on um, a table. I believe they're called chips. Don't leave them lying around, Stanley, mm-hmm. because he will take them. He will pick them up. <laughs> He'll take <Yeah>. them. <laughs> Claim them for his own. But oh. moving on from Black Panther, we all enjoyed it. Now we're going to talk about something that has a little bit more controversial topic behind it, which is the Venom teaser. I'm going to say teaser trailer. It's not a trailer. Mm-hmm. It's, not a trailer it's a teaser trailer. And it seems like people are really split on two sides of the fence here. Some people really liked it. Some people didn't like it. I'm going to share my thoughts. Ray, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you thought first of the Venom teaser trailer? Uh, yes. Yeah, so this um, movie that could be a Venom movie trailer <laughs> teaser or uh, just the next tom hardy's day in the life adventure is what it kind of looked like uh <laughs> like your everyday life and kind it of is, yeah. it's That's tom crazy. hardy i don't know what he does for a li- like I was, I, what does he do all day obviously this trailer kind of gave me a glimpse i don't know um like, I'm just trying to go to starbucks man <laughs> <laughs> there's cars flipping around and there's a meteorites and man 
Um, I watched it like a few <clears throat> times trying to get the point. I was like, why did they put this out? Like, was this just, I guess, kind of to make people aware that this was happening? Or they just wanted to put out a teaser? Like, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, this didn't need to exist. And I'm not saying it shouldn't. I'm just like, well, why? Like, you didn't really show us much other than a struggling Tom Hardy to get, get into Starbucks. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm um, guessing you're not impressed, but Tony. I guess it's not that I'm not impressed. It's just, I just, I, eh, I don't know why it's a thing. Tony, I know you have a different opinion. So let's hear it. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I'm not quite as along the same train of thought as Ray. Um, I thought it did well for what it did. See, we live in a time where people can't do anything right. You know, no matter what, somebody's going to bitch about something. You know what I mean? Um, if we got a trailer and they showed Venom in it, people would be complaining, well, they're showing too much too early. <laughs> like they actually showed... Mm-hmm. Eddie Brock with the sim- covered in the symbiote. Mm-hmm. People would have complained that you know they're showing too much too early. This is just it's it's the movie's what? When is it supposed to come out? It comes out in October. Uh, okay, October. The I movies. Believe, yeah. The movies what nine months out at this point. Mm-hmm. It's I feel like the, the teaser was showed the right amount of things, and I feel like it was mysterious enough, but I felt like they could have done something to make it a little bit more like I didn't need you to show me, you know, maybe I didn't need you to show me uh, Tom Hardy in full venom CGI or whatever. I didn't need that. Yeah. Um, something would have been cool. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't make movies. I'm a guy that sits here and talks about movies on a podcast and stuff. So I can't tell you what I would do if it was me, but I can say I would have done something to give people something because that, well, the end shot of it was kind of just Tom Hardy, Hardy writhing, what you know looked like the symbiote was starting to take him over. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I would have shown a little bit more of the symbiote on him because honestly, I couldn't even I didn't even see it the first time I watched the trailer. I had to watch it again, and you can kind of see it coming up on his neck and stuff. Maybe I would have shown a little bit more of that, um, but other than that, I didn't have a problem with it. Um, did it need to come out? Probably not, but it's something to get people excited about. Yeah, I was actually very excited after watching this teaser trailer because that's all it was, people. It was just a teaser trailer. You don't have to, like Tony said, you don't have to see him in full CGI Venom. We didn't need to see any of that. They just needed to tease to get people talking and to get people interested. And one way or another, that has worked out because whether people are talking about it negatively or positively, they're still talking about this movie. I personally liked the teaser trailer. There was some sort of, I don't know if it was a spacecraft or some sort of airplane crash that was going on. That was fine. The action scenes with Tom Hardy riding a bike, I don't know if that's something that Eddie Brock does in the comic books or not, but that was okay. I'll deal with that. But then we got to see the symbiote. And I really liked that. And I was like, that's really cool. And I'm like, is this the Venom symbiote or is this perhaps another symbiote? Since the movie is going to be based off two storyline arcs that involve, one of them involves different symbiotes attacking from a alien planet. And the other one involves symbiotes springing off from the Venom symbiote. And then those like five or seven symbiotes going crazy and they have to be defeated. So maybe it was the Venom symbiote. Maybe it was another symbiote. And then, yeah, the end scene, I know, like Tony, you were saying, you saw the Venom symbiote kind of starting to come up. But people actually kind of paused that, didn't they? Like, to get the exact timing to actually see anything. I still didn't see anything. Any images I've seen are two-hour focus for me. So I didn't see it. But, yeah, maybe just, like, up to here, maybe just some, like, sort of little cracks starting to appear. That would have been cool. But overall, I was satisfied with it. I'm actually surprised that it's received a lot of negative feedback it has received it's just a teaser trailer after all and i do think you're right if they showed any more than that people probably would have moaned about it and said oh they've showed us too much but just a little bit of a tease which is exactly what it was it worked out pretty great i think Have you guys got any more thoughts on this trailer uh so i'm like i'm thinking it's like ah yeah so what did i what did ray said uh, he he didn't really like it didn't know why it exists, but to offer a solution, what would I have done different? 
to improve upon what they gave us. Uh, right as you know, they showed him in the hospital about to symbiote out is what it looked like. Yeah, you cut to the the logo, but then at least give me a one liner in Venom's voice. Mm. I want to know like that. I feel like that to me would have been like, oh, oh, all okay. right, we got something here. All right, okay. but I, feel I feel like that would have like, been a good solution. Just that yeah. that that one little piece. I feel like they could have kept everything exactly the same, but added that one little thing at the end, and it would. I think I would have been way more interested. Yeah, okay, I think you're yeah. right. I think a lot more people would have been interested. Tony, do you have any thoughts on that? I I think that would be a great idea. Um, because again, I think showing. Uh, it's full CGI ven- or Venom. That would have mm-hmm. been too much. But I like Grace. I think one line of dialogue right there at the end. You know when they showed the title or whatever, mm-hmm. or even if they just like cut to black and then he said right. something. And then he said something sounding like what we would like. Hopefully, think Venom would sound like. Yeah, I thought that that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That would be really cool. Um, but regardless, I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely gonna be going to see the movie. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, I'm gonna like listen. I will talk shit about a lot of things, but I'm gonna go see it. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Um, it's exciting, and I'm. St- I still kind of got a bad taste in my mouth about the whole ordeal because of how they were handling things. You know, before they, before it was rumored that Tom Holland was showing up and everything in it, mm-hmm. it was really bothering me because uh, I just didn't see the point of a Venom movie that didn't involve Spider Man. Um, you, I, that's like creating a Joker movie without Batman. Who the hell would do that? DC. Mm. <laughs> but now that you know it's being rumored that it's going to have a lot more MCU ties than previously told, we were told um, that got me a lot more excited for it. So I'm definitely hyped. Um, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, huge Venom fan, huge Carnage fan. Um, that's another thing. Um, is Carnage going to be in this movie? Um, I, I, def- I. I don't want to say 100% yes, but I heard that he was. And I am 100% against that. Really? Why? 100%. All right, let's take a look at Carnage, Cletus Cassidy. Mm-hmm. Taken over by the symbiote. He's a mass murderer, serial killer. Oh, he's a crazy son of a bitch. Dude is a fucking crazy serial killing mass murderer. How do you adapt that well? for a movie that ideally is going to be selling toys. Ideally is going to be selling t-shirts and merchandise. How do you adapt that well and put it into a movie without being able to have it be rated R? I'm, I've always said this, like even before, even back when, you know, the Tobey Maguire stuff, people say, oh, I mean, I want to see Carnage. And I'm like, I kind of don't, <laughs> unless they do, unless they're going to do it right. And yeah. I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to, there's going to be a firm boundary that they will, they cannot and will not cross because of studio heads and execs. And that makes me sad <laughs> because well, I would Venom to... is meant to be rated R. Is it? Yeah. Yes. That's what I heard. Is it? Yeah. They are, okay. they was well, um, yeah. going for an R rating. Whether this changes, I hope it doesn't because I mean, Venom's kind of crazy too. And it, you know, it's like the whole uh, Ryan Reynolds Deadpool situation. Like, if we're going to do Deadpool, do it right and don't give us that piece of crap that you gave us with his mouth So, Who calls it the Merc with the mouth and you stitch his mouth up? Like, <laughs> like actually. Job. Great well, job. If that's the case, if that's the case, then I'm, I'll, I, I'll leave because I don't, apparently don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> but that, <laughs> that, 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 makes me feel, that makes me feel a little bit, that makes me feel better. If, that, if they're going the R-rated route, then okay, then give me carnage, fine. Yeah, they, they are looking to go that route. I still hope that does and that gets finalised, that we are getting an R-rated banner because we don't need every comic book movie to be R-rated, but we no. do need some of them if we really want to get the best adaptation from the comic and from the character we can, just like Deadpool. And, I mean, look how successful the first movie was on a ridiculously small budget, and it Logan. paid. Logan. Logan. I wish we had gotten an R-rated Wolverine movie before we got to Logan. I really do. Like, I love Logan, but I really do wish we got to see, like, a younger, more in his prime Wolverine with an R rating. Oh, man, that would have been fantastic. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel yeah. like it would have been better than the Wolverine. Let's be real. Yeah. Um, 
Couldn't have been yeah. worse than Origins. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Let's not make everyone really sad. Let's move on to some questions from our Patreon community. First Ooh. up, Rachel Penley. Tony, I know you like this question, so I'm going to ask you first. With no budget limit at all, what franchise would you love to direct slash produce? Star Wars. Star Wars. That's a, that's a, yeah, that's kind of an obvious answer. I don't know why I was hoping for something more. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if Star Wars wasn't my choice um it would probably be um it would probably be either batman Mm -hmm. or it would be um probably and i think batman or star wars would be my two things um i would like to tell uh, for star wars i'd like to tell something in a completely different era i'd like to adapt uh the old republic and if you listen to the podcast i kind of uh if you listen to the our pod, Star Wars podcast, I kind of went into depth about how much I would love to see the Old Republic adapted and how I hope that's what, you know, maybe uh, you guys from Game of Thrones are going to do with their movies. Um, but that's what I would do with that. So. That's what I would like to see too, actually, Old Republic stuff. Bring it back because, I mean, I didn't like the solo trailer. I've got zero interest in the movie. I've got zero interest in going to see the movie. And I don't like the current direction it's Star Wars is heading so I uh, yeah if anyone's out there from Lucasfilm or Disney just uh let Tony produce one of your films and bring it back to the old republic please that's right yeah uh mm-hmm. Ray how about you this is an this is an interesting one because you know we talked about how it's like oh yeah Ray isn't really a movie guy but you made me think about this and this is this is good uh because I honestly I would love to do a I love to do Superman justice I really do. Uh, okay. Superman, Bazinga. he. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for catching that. <laughs> it's late in the year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to do a good. I mean, we've gotten some okay glimpses of Superman stories that could have been great, but I would love to tell the story of Superman as, as he, Superman is the down to earth <laughs> uh, alien that has a family. <laughs> And he do- he wants to do the right thing, like he does. He wants to do right by everybody, and we all know that you can't do right by everybody. That's that's impossible for most humans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love to tell just a, a solid Superman story. He doesn't always have to knock down a building with his body because I mean he's Superman. He should be trying to, uh, you know, make have as little collateral damage as possible. <laughs> So, yeah, there's there's more stories with Superman to be told. Uh, but one that I'd really, really, really love to do is uh, Blue Marvel, uh, Adam Brasher, uh, part of the Ultimates in the Marvel Universe. I would love to tell that story and give it uh, just the time of day. I would love that. That'd be so much fun. <laughs> so since you mentioned Superman, how hurt were you when they decided to go a different direction with Justice League and not do the, the death of Superman story? <sighs> like they should have uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they should have i i think it, it, it i was most disappointed when i first so when you first saw it happen at the end of batman versus superman you saw what was about to happen i was like i can't believe it. they're taking one of the most iconic stories ever told about a superhero and they're just gonna rush it like this i was i was sad then um because yeah. I, I i wanted to love batman versus superman so much let me tell you i had so i had such high hopes for that movie uh believe it or not and then for them to just be like yeah we're gonna take some elements of the death of superman i was like why why not why would you just use it and focus on that that story is powerful uh but i mean we can't have everything and again like tony said i'm also not a director slash story writer so what do i know right i'm just a fan um it could have been done better i think um like everything came i think that specifically could have been done way better yeah the only thing i've liked from the dc universe so far apart from the animation stuff and i'm not a big fan of animation but that animation stuff's really good but uh wonder woman Wonder Woman's the only um live action movie of theirs i've actually liked thus far and that includes my movies too oh man of this of this current cinematic universe yeah, yeah wonder woman's definitely a step in the right direction um you can't forget about Oscar award-winning Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> the fact that Oscar winning. I'm never gonna let anybody forget. <laughs> See, I, I, I 
loved Wonder Woman. I, you know, I totally walked into the theater expecting it to be shit. Um, Cause a, you know, track record mm-hmm. of DC and B not going to lie. I, not oh, not never been the biggest Wonder Woman fan. I mean, not that I dislike the character or anything. I, she's just never been for me. It's not been not my kind of comic, I guess. But oh my god, I loved that movie. But I'm also in the minority because I absolutely loved Man of Steel. And if you heard the pod, the Star Wars podcast, our first episode, I kind of went on a rant about it because we had a community question, and I just I loved it. But I I and it's so weird because I dislike Superman as a character. Oh, but, man. It's great. I was there was some. There were just I nitpicked that one too, so I'm not even gonna get into it. Like Man Steel is a good movie. Like it is a good movie. Um, anybody who wants to find me on that, hey, hey, you can find me on that. But still, it's a good movie. I don't think DC even know themselves which direction they're heading in at the moment. Besides yeah, Aquaman, no, for sure. You know, we know we've got Aquaman, but then it's like, oh, this is on the table. No, that's off the table. But this is on the table. No, that's off the table. But this is on the table. They need to, uh, as we would say, sort it out. I think, they, I think they need to shut up at this point. Like, yeah. stop, stop talking about what you're doing and just do something worth doing. Yeah, like, just and do it. How, to a plan would help. Right. Go. <laughs> How long have they had like eight movies on the dock? Like forever, it feels like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for, for for too long. Um, Thomas Skilkey he asks if you could insert like yourself. Guy. Thomas is amazing. He's uh, one of our. He's just a standard for our patrons in our community. Um, he wants to know if you could. It's, I love this question. If you could insert yourself into any movie or TV universe, which one would it be, and which character would you be? Tony, I'm going to go to you first. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, it's just the one word answer, man. There, there is always room in life for more Star Wars. Okay. Uh, um, no. Um, in all seriousness, probably would be Star Wars, and I don't think I'd be anybody specific. I'd probably be like kind of my own scare, my own character. Um, I'd be some kind of Sith. So, um, if that, if if I'm gonna give an answer that's not cliche with my Star Wars, I'd probably be. Uh, I want to be one of the assassins in John Wick, one that doesn't necessarily cross paths with John Wick uh-huh. because those don't usually end too well for them. Uh-huh. Um, but that would be cool to be like in that world as an assassin. So I think that would be cool. Okay, Ray, how about you? Any movie or TV franchise on what what character? Thomas, this was this was easy. You picked the right weekend. Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, put me in Wakanda. <laughs> put me in, coach. Uh, and as far as who I would be, um, Mbaku. I'd 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 be oh. Mbaku. <laughs> like that I that would be a fun I don't know. His life seems interesting. I would like to be that character. Or uh, if my wife's not listening, whoever ends up being Shuri's boyfriend in the future. Yep. Oh, done. Wow. <laughs> Someone else, that's how <laughs> That's how you keep your woman happy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I think mine is going to be an obvious answer. It's going to be the MCU. And, uh, I'd give a crack at She-Hulk. I'd need All right, yeah. Any kind of southern kind of accent because I can't do that for shit and I'm not even going to try. But that's the one I'd choose and that's the one I'd like to be in. Uh, Chris Diaz asks Is Black Panther the best Marvel movie like some people are claiming it to be? Ray, is it the best MCU movie or Marvel movie, I guess, in general to date? Uh, as a solo movie? As, yeah, as one movies as where i said yeah um yes. I, yeah as the, the solo movies go yes it is the best one um because of it, i only say that because just Infinity war is so close and we all know that's gonna be great well, it's just the stuff that's out but yeah as of right now that's one in mcu best one okay uh tony would you uh, would you say it's the best marvel movie thus far um well not talk like are we talking about you did say we could be uh old marvel movies too not just mcu well he said marvel movies he didn't literally just pinpoint it okay. to the okay. MCU. okay so. there wasn't anything i think before the mcu was a thing that would really stand out you know what i mean there's yeah. unless you want the 2000 what hulk the 2000 ish hulk <laughs> right, right oh um, no x-men uh, or something yeah um but uh 
me personally, my favorite MCU movie currently is Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. I was wondering if you were going to say two. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I wasn't as big of a fan as two as some people. Ooh. Ooh. Not that I disliked it. I, I liked the movie a lot, but it just mm-hmm. didn't. Re- it just didn't touch me the way that the first one did. Um, Black Panther is absolutely giving it a run for its money. Um, I need to see it a few more times. I've only seen it once, um, but I need to see it a few more times. I think it's definitely got potential to become my favorite best Marvel movie. Yeah, it has potential for me too, but it's really hard to take. I mean, out of all the Marvel movies, out of all the MCU movies that have come out, Iron Man remains at the top of my list because it's the movie that started it all. It was so amazing. What was like 10 years old now? I'm going to look like feeling like I'm like... Yeah, oh. yeah 10 years. 10 years ago and it still holds up it's still amazing maybe and it's a great adaptation of iron man so for, to knock iron man off my number one it's really hard to do that uh it did that for me to be completely honest with iron man number one for oh. uh and like every single movie come out iron man was still my favorite one but yeah this one managed to dethrone iron man as number one on my list it's crazy <laughs> Maybe I need to go see it another, like, ten times, like yourself. <laughs> I mean, I watched I, the first Iron Man movie, like, 12 times, like, the initial time it came out, and I was also much younger and had a lot less time then, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss uh, my <laughs> uh, All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up this week. But before we go, Tony, tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at TonySin underscore GG. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Twan Center and Facebook.com slash Twan Center. And you can hear me every two weeks on a uh, hair geeks and gamers radio on late night in Canto bite, the star Wars podcast. Such a catchy name. I don't know if any of you are WWE fans, but there's a new chant and it's um, to do with Lana, who is Rusev's wife. Lana is the best. Lana number one. <laughs> cannot get that out of my head. It's one of the most weird yep. things. And I, I'm, I'm walking around my flat and I just end up saying it. I'm like, shit, when will this end? Yep. Like, yep. Matt Hardy, delete, delete, please. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> but, Ray, where can the good folks watching us find you? Uh, you can find me anytime you want on Twitter. Uh, Ray Apollo on Twitter. Uh, if you were like, Ray, everything you said on this episode was wrong. Tell me, and I will uh, acknowledge and then not acknowledge you. It'll be great. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, I am one of the co-hosts for the gaming uh, podcast here on Geeks and Gamers. So, so every about a week ish, we put out an episode talking about some of the latest and greatest in video games. Uh, so look for me there. Uh, we have a um, Ray Osorio and. Aaron Morris, we have a good time, and I promise you will laugh. And if you don't laugh, I'm don't sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, like a, a confused apology. I'm sorry. yeah. <laughs> yes. Am I sorry? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So that's sure. where that's where I am on the internet. And you guys can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Kaz the Geek. Thank you for watching Geeks and Gamers Prime, and we will catch you next week.